um, a dictatorship. Uh, you look at San Francisco, dictatorship. You look at uh, Sacramento, dictatorship. One party rule. This is the model that they like, the model of the ex-Soviet Union, where the people are ruled by a group of corrupt, money-grubbing, so-called leaders. What question would you ask Hillary Clinton if she'd come out from hiding? WMAL, Washington, D.C., Joe. Go ahead, you're on the Savage Nation. What would you ask Hillary if you can get her to answer? My question would be, Madam Secretary, how do you sleep at night knowing that your failed policies in the Middle East, in Iraq, in Libya, in Syria, and in Yemen, have resulted in the kidnapping and raping of tens of thousands of young girls throughout the Middle East and in the slaughtering of hundreds of thousands. Madam Secretary, how do you sleep at night? That was- Joe, that's very, that's very articulate. I can see why CNN didn't ask you to ask a question tonight. Stay in the line. You're going to go on a list for a free copy of Government Zero. No borders, no language, uh, no culture. Keep him on the line so we can get that book out. Did you hang up on him? No, there he is. He's right there. Uh, we have time for a few more questions. Let's go to uh, KVOR Radio. David, welcome. What would you ask Hillary Clinton if you get it to stop hiding? Hillary, uh, the day after uh, the Kentucky clerk was jailed for uh, failing to issue gay marriage licenses, you came out and offered praise, high praise, and admonition for the officials to continue doing their job. I ask you now, will you offer that same praise and admonition for the officials looking into the email scandal, Benghazi, the Clinton Foundation, and other things that may be percolating out there? So what, what's, the, what's the, the crux of the question? Well, I want to know if she would offer praise to the people who are investigating her. Ah, ah, ah. David, you win a copy of Government Zero. Stay on the line. Well, everyone's asking about the rape of girls in the Middle East, and no one's even asking that question of the Republicans of what they would do to stop ISIS, how long it would take them to, to stop this, uh, this, this uh, rampage of the Islamo-fascists. Okay? WABC, Patrick, what would you ask Hillary Clinton if she'd come out from under the rock? Thank you, Dr. Savage. I would ask the one question with the most common issue that's bogging down her shoot for the uh, nomination, and that would be about the email scandal. It'll be... Secretary Clinton, being all the, uh, having all the political experience that you've had and being through all the jobs that you've had and having the high security clearance that you've had, I would imagine you've had great training on standard operating procedures as it pertains to emails. Knowing this and the Freedom of Information Act laws that exist, you're using the one thing to say that you're saying these emails were classified after the fact as your defense. Well, having all that training and having that classified, uh, knowing that they vet your emails after the fact, emails are sent. All right, so wait, wait, we're getting confused, Patrick. Make the question simple. You're getting one shot to ask Hillary Clinton the question. Make it a one-sentence question. Secretary Clinton, having the training that you've had and security clearances that you've had, your defense is that these emails were classified after the fact. Knowing that these are vetted after the fact through the, because of Freedom of Information Act laws, why would you use that as a defense knowing that every single... All right. In other words, knowing, knowing the law, why would you break the law? The answer is that's what I do for a living. That's how my husband and I have gotten where we are. So that's very good, Patrick. Stay in the line. We'll get you a copy of Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture. Remember, coming up at the bottom of the hour is the Wall Street Journal reporter Jeff Elder to give us an update on the San Francisco miscarriage of justice case that is being talked about across the country. How could videotape of a beating of a woman, excuse me, the alleged beating of a woman, recorded on security cameras, how could such videotape be dismissed by a judge? How is it even possible? That's what people are asking. Why is there no federal investigation? We would ask why hasn't the state moved in since it's an alleged uh case of domestic abuse. Do you know that if a cop is even accused of domestic abuse, they lose the right to carry a gun? Here is a guy who was allegedly caught on camera beating a woman over a 30-minute period and the case was thrown out. What does that tell you? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about a country that has such a system of justice? My attorney, Dan Horowitz, says, bottom line, if you are rich and have powerful friends, you get away with violent crime. If you're one of my black clients, says Dan Horowitz in Oakland, you get thrown in Santa Rita, 
and do more time waiting for trial than this guy Shalal got for a major violent attack. Well, tonight's the debates. We'll continue more about that. But remember, Wall Street Journal, Jeff Felden, when I come back right here on the Savage Nation, be here or be nowhere. Well, we're going to take a detour from the presidential debates tonight uh, and look at another subject that came up this week about the venture capitalists with political ties who uh, was accused or allegedly, well, he was originally charged in August 2013 with 45 felony accounts after San Francisco prosecutors alleged he struck his girlfriend more than 100 times over a 30-minute period in his apartment. And yet a judge in San Francisco, that's an oxymoron, ruled that the tape, the home security video, was inadmissible. Jeff Elder of the Wall Street Journal did the hard work on this. Mr. Elder, thank you for being with us on the Savage Nation. Thanks, Michael. Why uh, was it that these videotapes were considered inadmissible? Because my lawyer says that they are admissible. So the uh, police officers on the scene took the video um, camera system from the apartment uh, before they had a warrant. And uh, the judge uh, ruled that they were inadmissible for the case for that reason, which hurt the case a great deal. Right. No, I understand what what the ruling was, but Dan Horowitz says that there are cases where such evidence is very much admissible, even if the police sees it, because they know that it's going to be erased if they don't. Um. Okay, uh, so that ruling was not really uh, what my story was about, um, and I agree that that was a much disputed thing. But um, okay, so what was the story really? Do you, f Jeff, do you feel having done this story that there was a miscarriage of justice? Well, as a reporter, I don't really have an opinion uh, on that. What what my story was about was new documents that came to light that some powerful political figures were discussing how to help this entrepreneur with his domestic violence case and okay. with something that hadn't been uncovered before. So there was a venture capitalist who was a big fundraiser for uh, President Obama and both campaigns and a former Speaker of the Assembly uh, of California and San Francisco Mayor who apparently were involved in trying to help uh, this um, this suspect in this domestic violence case. Mm -hmm. What has happened since your article was published? Have there been any calls for a federal follow-up or any other additional inf uh, you know, investigation, or, or it's over? Uh, I am not aware of any um, calls for a, a federal follow-up. That's an interesting question. Um, the U.S. attorney uh, could ultimately be... Um, Someone who would look into this, the, um, the Attorney General for the State of California does have ties to um, a couple of the figures in this story, mm -hmm. Kamala Harris, um, <laughs> who's sort of a protege of Willie Brown, who was involved uh, in this story. So that's an interesting question, but I haven't heard anything about that. Just one note, Dan Horowitz, who's a criminal, you know, criminal def defense attorney, he said, I cannot challenge the judge throwing the videotapes out. That is his call. He said that the law is clear, though. If the recordings would inevitably have been discovered anyway, suppression is not the remedy. Why didn't the SF prosecutors raise that issue and, if necessary, take the issue to the Court of Appeal? So that's just a, a legalese thing that I know nothing about. I um, am very interested in, in the article because I knew nothing of the case until it appeared in the SF gate when Mateer and Ross picked up on your story and ran with it. And Phil Mateer was on the show yesterday, and he told us that you actually did the hard work. He said, you you did the digging of the emails. Can you tell us a little about that process, Jeff? Because people don't know how hard real journalism <laughs> actually is. What did you have to do to get those emails? Um, I can't reveal my sources. Uh, those emails were sort of the heart of the story. And what they showed was um, the extent to which some attorneys, investors, and political figures um, involved uh, wanted to help this entrepreneur because an initial public offering was uh, in the near future. And um, I think that's what created a lot of the response. 
was um, that there were some discussions on emails uh, between attorneys, um, some big venture capitalists, and the office for a uh, powerful politician about how to help uh, sort of shape this case as it headed to the district attorney. It's important to point out that uh, there is no evidence that the district attorney in any way um, yielded to any of this pressure, um, or even that the um, that any kind of official meetings took place. So, the people that huddled on how to help Gervash Chahal in this legal situation um, apparently failed. In fact, there are emails in which some of the attorneys um, and the suspect uh, expressed consternation with the district attorney. Um, one attorney said that perhaps he should meet with some domestic violence. And I, you know, I saw that, Jeff. I cannot believe an attorney would say that about uh, about who he said he should meet domestic violence. Who, who, who said that? So an attorney for the company um, involved said that oh. the district attorney, and that um, did raise a lot of eyebrows. Uh, Mr. Chahal... An wait, an attorney for the, for the accused said that perhaps the DA should receive some domestic violence? God in heaven, I cannot believe an attorney could write a thing like that on an email and not lose, lose his right to practice law in the state of California. That definitely uh, created a lot of um, comment. Yeah, Michael. Um, another uh, email from Mr. Chahal uh, said he was going to create a super PAC in 2016 to try to push the district attorney out of office. So these are people who were major uh, fundraisers, major um, campaign donors, Steve Wesley um, raised a half a million dollars in bundled donations for President Obama in both campaigns. Um, Mr. Chahal, the suspect in the case, was also a major contributor um, to politicians. So that was not an empty kind of statement. Hmm. Well, this is very interesting. I mean, before you go, Jeff, and I, I won't keep you. I know you're, you're a man who prefers to write rather than speak. I recognize that. And I, I want to ask you a very important question for young people listening to this show about journalism. How many months did you devote to this story in the Wall Street Journal, Radium One work to save IPO uh, amid scandal? How long did the story take you to do? Um, well, I've covered Mr. Chahal's legal um, uh, cases now for, I don't know, a year and a half. This particular story kind of took shape over the past. Uh, six or seven weeks, I guess. That's all, huh? Is he still with the... He, he was taken off the board, right, after this case was thrown out anyway? He was taken off the board? So the case was not thrown out. He pleaded guilty to two misdemeanors um, and received three years of probation and a $500 <laughs> fine. That uh, sentence was protested a great deal in Silicon Valley. That protest caused the company to fire him. Uh, from wow. the company that he founded. Um, so the the mediation brief that uh, yielded some of the documents that I had um, was because he, he got fired and, and there had to be a separation mediation. Mm. Well, I hope they haven't threatened you with domestic violence. I'm, I'm not expecting an answer on that one. Well, this is politics in San Francisco where... As Dan Horowitz wrote, if you're rich and have powerful friends, you can get away with violent crime. I mean, that's his opinion. And he says, if you're one of my black clients in Oakland, you get thrown in Santa Rita and do more time waiting for trial than this Shalal got for a major violent attack. Again, that's a defense attorney, uh, not me, because he knows the law and I don't. I want to thank you, Jeff Elder, for taking time out uh, for being with us today on The Savage Nation. Thank you very much for The Wall Street Journal. The time now is 42 minutes after the hour. This is The Savage Nation. The phone number here is 855-407-282. If you get a comment about the debates, meaning what would you ask Hillary Clinton if you can get her to debate, or if you want to talk, if you're a local or, I mean, let's say, a lawyer or a prosecutor, how do you feel about a case like this? A man being charged with 45 felony accounts after prosecutors alleged he struck his girlfriend more than 100 times over a 30-minute period in his apartment, and that a judge rules that a home security video recording of the incident was seized without a warrant, and then he throws the tapes out as evidence. And then the alleged victim refuses to testify. Anybody want to comment on justice in the United States of America? Anybody want to comment on why there's such dissension 
amongst people at the bottom of the system, people without money. Anyone want to comment about the rich?